Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and this is the Three Up and Three Down, where we're covering the hot and cold comic book market trends for this week. That's right, we're going to have three hot, three cold, but before we get into that, just last night on the Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel, we premiered that new episode of that Simple Man's Comics and Friends. That is our flagship podcast. So if you're looking for a great audio show, make sure you check out iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever those audio podcasts are found. That's perfect long form content for you to listen to while you, I would say commute, but a lot of people aren't really commuting right now since we're all on quarantine. But it's a great episode. We deemed it the New York episode, didn't we, Jack? That's right, because of course we had two native New Yorkers, Mel V and Wolf Warner in the house. Now Mel V, of course, has been a regular guest on the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, but Wolf Warner is a first timer, somebody that we really wanted to get on the channel. So it was great to have those two guys um, give us uh, their perspective, the very, very New York perspective on a lot of things we talked about topics from the movie market to uh, long-term plays uh, to, you know, what's going on right now with the current modern market with Comics Hub and everything else. So it was a great discussion. I really appreciate those guys for joining us. And it's kind of the point of that podcast. You know, Brian, we get a lot of different voices giving different opinions, and we have that open forum right here on the Simple Miss Comics YouTube channel. Yeah, so I think we had Brooklyn and Queens represented last That's night. Right. No doubt it was the New York episode. We even had some New York ambient noise in there. But hey, <laughs> great show. Love those guys to death and really appreciate them coming on the channel. But we're going to get into it right now with that three up portion, starting with the first one. And we are talking about Gambit. This is one you saw get kind of hot a few years ago, especially with the movie and everything. But then it started having issues. The director dropped out, talent. But you're starting to see Gambit kind of escalate again. Is this because of the movie news? What's going on with this, Jack? Yeah, there's some strong rumors going on right now that Gambit is going to be one of the kind of earlier X-Men characters that we're going to see get into production, but it's not necessarily going to be MCU movie style, um, which is where we initially expected to see like a Channing Tatum Gambit uh, film end up. That was the whole deal with Fox. We thought, well, maybe this will carry over with Disney. Maybe it won't. Now it's looking more and more like a Disney Plus streaming uh, service TV show is the kind of inevitable place where Gambit is going to take place. And it could end up being a more fast track project than several of the other X titles. And a lot of this stems on the back of those icons that showed up, those X-Men icons that showed up on the Disney Plus streaming service. But there's a lot of rumors going around based on those. And the truth is we really don't know what is what. Um, there, The sources of these, we've heard, seen it everywhere. It's um, Mikey Sutton, Lords of the Long Box have talked about it a lot of various uh, websites have talked about it. So it, it's definitely out there. The gambit news is being talked about, but we haven't yet seen any sort of like Disney sort of confirmed evidence, but either way we've already seen people as we talked about in the podcast, I think it was Wolf Warner who said buy on the rumor, right? So as these rumors start to kick up about Gambit, people are starting to buy and we're starting to see the first appearance of Gambit, that uncanny X-Men 266 issue, as well as the real first appearance, albeit some may say in cameo form, that uncanny X-Men annual 14. Both are seeing uh, spikes in price. I expect that to happen for maybe a couple weeks and then die down as kind of Today's news becomes old news, but these are great buys. He's, Gambit is a great character, and there's definitely legs here. Yeah, I remember when that news first came out. I want to say it was like 2016, that year, Baltimore Comic Con. That was the wall book, that X-Men 266. Mm -hmm. And it was selling for about 30% over eBay prices. But uh, either way, nice to see Gambit back in the news and people hunting those books. But the next one for Hot this week, we're talking about trends right we talk about trends not just single issues not just everything but we're talking about with everything that's going on we are starting to see that industry innovation this is one thing we talked about we one time i said something that's going to come out of this i think there's going to be some great trends and innovation that stick i think that's still true to the case we're going to see some stuff going on but this goes across multiple right we're talking about lcs's we're talking about creative we're talking about artists writers um some publishers 
everyone's innovating because of what's going on with the stoppage of releases and LCS is being closed. You're getting mail orders, curbside delivery, um, all types of great innovative techniques. Social media is definitely rampant right now, especially with creators being able to, to sell their goods. And I think that's a great thing. Yeah, so we started to see some of this innovation actually at the publisher level, I would say about a year ago. You start, you're starting to see publishers who do things a little differently um, starting to get their products to the masses. So whether it was TKO Studios with their kind of like bulk release but print on demand style, whether it's um, the Scout Binge program where you get the issue number one and then you buy the trade for the rest of the story. Or whether, uh, you know, it's any number of, of programs that we've seen publishers roll out. Publishers have been willing to, to kind of take a shot to see what, what is what. And I think Bad Idea Studio, uh, 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 a publisher we talked about on the podcast on our very first episode, that's a prime example. That's a, a publisher trying to do something innovative and completely different. Um, and then coronavirus occurs and suddenly now we are forced to innovate and you were right you said this the whole time that um you know that is hopefully the positive that will come out is that there will be some innovation now and you've seen it at every level as you mentioned yeah definitely be interested to see how once we get back on schedule all those industry events comics pro those retailer summits what kind of um changes are going to be discussed so that this doesn't happen again because you know they're not going to want to deal with it and um, I think some positive changes will come out of it. And I think there'll be some growing pains with stuff, but that's how innovation works. But yep. either way, the next one for our three up portion this week is foreign comics. I do have to give a shout out to a good buddy of ours, John Z from Tales from Flipside. He's been on foreign comics for a good while now. Also one of our Patreon members, Robert Fordham. He's a huge foreign comic fan. He's always showing stuff on Instagram, but I don't have much knowledge in foreign comics, but I do know there is a lot of good money tied up in those. Yeah, and the biggest thing is there's been a major transition, Brian, um, going on within foreign comics. And I think that really um, the largest influence on that is Matthew Roybal. Um, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, I know he's a viewer of our channel, um, so shout out to Matthew. Um, he's also, you know, a a, a longtime uh, member of the comics community, and he is an absolute expert, the most knowledgeable person maybe that exists on foreign comics. Uh, an absolute asset to the community, but an underutilized asset to the community, and. John Zercher, who you mentioned, John Z, as most of us know him from CBSI, um, who's a member of the Tales from the Flipside podcast, they've begun to work together. And yeah, have- that Comic Safari show on, on their channel is really good. <laughs> they, ever since they started spotlighting foreign comics on their show, um, if you've never watched the Tales from the Flipside podcast, it can be kind of an all over the place podcast. Sometimes they're doing baseball cards, sometimes they're talking about movies. Um, but in between there, there's occasionally just absolute golden nuggets of information. And one place where they really struck gold was with this foreign comics. And it really caught the attention of a niche community. And you know what community it is? Is immigrants and children of immigrants. Um, it really, I, I think, connected with a lot of people. Also, it gave people essentially variant covers to books that don't have variants, like vintage keys. Um, so if you're a diehard venom collector and you feel like well you know i've already got venom's first appearance now you can go collect them from every country and some of them they like even change the whole storylines up on exactly yeah well that's a whole another thing those the mexican amazing spider-mans that refused to acknowledge the death of gwen stacy um it essentially created non-canon completely original um amazing spider-man stories those are unique and now very, very rare, but people picked up on it. So you had like a lot of people I hear, you know, attribute it to uh, the the YouTuber Comic Tom, Comic Tom 101, who we worked with in the past with CBSI days. You know, he he really picked up being, um, I, I, he's of Hispanic descent, picked up on some of the stuff that I know that like the fl- some of the flip side guys were doing and really, really, really enjoyed it. And that's kind of the reaction that some people get. So I personally have 
as an Italian American have chased down various keys in their Italian edition. I just kind of enjoy that. Um, I never expected it to have the secondary market value that they do now. I, I thought when originally, I mean, foreign comics is not a new thing. We've been talking about this for 10 years, but a decade ago when we first started talking about it, um, it was super niche then. Yeah, and I, we all thought they would get popular, and then they didn't. And so for the longest time, they didn't. And then momentum began with this younger crop of, uh, of comic collector who started to say, I really think that's cool. And now suddenly foreign comics, are really that market is exploding very similarly to the golden age, where I say that because it only takes the sale of one book. So few get put up, the sale of one book can spike a market uh, on that book. So keep an eye out for foreign comics. If you can get them cheap, grab them because uh, there's still deals out there. Be on the lookout and be careful when you're buying foreign comics. A lot of foreign uh, uh, dealers and collectors ship absolutely terribly. So uh, condition becomes really lower your expectations. It becomes really difficult. Yeah, and again, I would say definitely check out that Comic Safari video series oh, on Tales from the Flipside. Yeah, watch a few episodes before you even step your, you know, your toe into that market. Make sure you feel comfortable. And uh, but I, you know, I again, I do it for the PC, and I really enjoy it. Yeah. So that's our three out portion. We're going to shift right now into the downward trends. But we always say there's some gold in those downward trends, right? Some great buying opportunities. Oh yeah, and, and this week is absolutely no different. And we're going to start it off with Star. Star was really hot. I mean, I'm talking scorching hot. We are talking about Star almost as much as we – well, we're talking about Punchline until the, we had the halt in the process. Yeah. But either way, you are kind of seeing a downward trend. But do you still have faith in this character? Oh, I have a, t I have a ton of faith in this character. I am – honestly, this is a buy for me. Um, this is a book that I think you'll probably see on that Bolo buy list at some point, because here's the thing. There was so much momentum with star star. As you read the story, really solid reader buzz. This is a good character. Um, and then the star number one issue comes out a lot of support for that, but just bad timing, right? Cause as soon as that series really began, this whole thing shuts down. Momentum dies. This slot I'm using Star really truly as an example, I think, Brian, because I, I wanted to do something almost more um, open-ended, like new characters, because like Storm Ranger's down right now. Um, there's several of those kind of like, even going back, Crush is down, um, and, you know, even to an extent, still very popular, but down from where he was, Batman Who Laughs. Uh, you know, the second prints are absolutely nothing. But the one outlier to all of that is punchline punchline is the prices are so consistent um, that really that throws that whole thing into uh, um, you know, a monkey wrench in that whole thing. But the real question to it to me is, is star. I just think there's so much potential with star. I, I really think there's a good opportunity from those store exclusive Virgin covers uh, the carnageized ones that kind even of the regular that. priced Campbell covers are nice. The, the regular price cover is the best buy. The cover A, that's the best one. It was going for about twenty five to thirty. It's mm -hmm. dropped down to about fifteen. I think it's a buy at fifteen um, because I really think that that's a minimum twenty five to thirty dollar book, but has really fifty to sixty dollar potential. Um, that's not a high printed book. If that character has some staying power. And then those second and third prints are absolutely gorgeous. Um, that the, the the composition colors that the really really great covers. So um, I like all of it. I, I, it's one I would keep an eye out for. But it's worth acknowledging that hey, there's a dip in the price right here, and that's the point of this. It's not maybe cold. We wouldn't call it cold, but it's trending downward. Yep. Then the next one I want to talk about is mid and low grade raw comics now. At the macro level, it's hard to, you know, if you're looking at comics in general, right? Yeah, I'm not going after a mid, low grade modern comic, most likely. Yep. But when you start talking, let's say bronze, silver age, or even that, I, that, that's the lake I live in, man. I love mid to low grade raw, especially bronze, silver age, even some golden age, because those ones, one, I like it for PC, but two, and then even, Sean Leggett's talked about this before is those are perfect books to put up on an auction and just let them go. Yep. But 
they are kind of trending down, but I think that's just trending down with also with the situation and the buying power that people have where people are kind of holding their money close because they don't know what, what to expect or how long things are going to last. But Jack, I'd also love to hear your take on this. Yeah, that and it's comparative, Brian. So right now there's an influx of like keys on eBay as people like are putting their books up for a couple reasons. Stores that can't sell at conventions or um, within their store, they're now putting more books up on eBay. Convention dealers, you know, those dealers who, you know, they don't have a store, but they're traveling from convention to convention, convention, maybe they're retired, um, whatever, weekend warrior types, they're putting more books up. Uh, the average person, collector is putting more books up for financial games. So there's just more books out there. And when you start to do that, what always gets watered down is the low end. And the reason is because it's just there's so much good stuff out there. If you want an Eternals number one, right, it, there's so many good quality copies out there the best buy becomes that book that is uh that you would grade maybe like a four to a six somewhere in that range you're buying that for 20 and change when that book spikes that's triple quadruple very easy whether it's at a time when the book's hot via auction like you mentioned um whether that's just to put it up at a high price now, set it and forget it and wait for uh, the time when that book kind of kind of cycles back through. But there's a lot. I mean, if you look around eBay right now, a consistent trend that I'm seeing is books in that grade. Like the, the prices are just, that's the most attractive prices that I'm seeing. Yeah, you're seeing a dip on the high end, but you know what? It's at Nico mentioned it. If you guys didn't get a chance to watch, check out uh, Nico time. I did an interview over there on the comic book wars podcast, uh, YouTube channel. Um, Nico mentioned this and I, and it's really something that stuck with me. Once people get used to asking a certain price for a book, psychologically, they just don't want to come off that price. So I think there's a lot of prices that are retaining and they're retaining only because that undercutter wave hasn't, hit yet um and it may as this progresses as people get more and more desperate financially but right now the best area that seems to be impacted seems to be those mid to low grade keys and you can go up as expensive as you want uh, they seem to be like the most vulnerable to price right now. So pay attention to auctions, um, be patient, uh, make sure you're looking at a lot of pictures because you don't want detached covers or anything. You know, you want to avoid those types of things. Yeah. But you want, yeah, about that four O. Yeah, yeah. If you're four O to six O, if you're staying in that four O to six O range, very it, good plus to very fine or fine plus. But uh, I, I, like for instance, like two thousand thirteen ish, I bought um. Fantastic 452, and it was probably like raw on eBay, $55, and it was probably like a four four oh four five, right? And then I held on to it, and then right before Black Panther hit, I just said, oh, I'll just throw it up on auction and see what happens. And that thing went up to like $360, and I was flat out surprised, and I was like, man, this is actually works. But um, yeah, those those bronze and silver age keys, especially in that low to mid-low um, grade, are great buying opportunities because people want them i mean for pc or whatever and a lot of those higher grades especially for those type issues are get out of people's reach quick so the last one we're going to talk about in the three down is tom king's batman um jack and i've talked about tom this i'll say run if you want to call it that right uh rebirth on through but um from a macro holistic level i like tom king's run on batman there were some issues or some times where I was like, I don't, I don't know what the F's going on, but maybe I'll pick up in the next issue. Um, but no doubt, I think more people didn't like it than that people that did like it. And, but there's some great issues in there. And I think some of those might pop off later on down the road, who knows? And they're super cheap. So me, I got them for my PC, but Jack, what do you think about this? Yeah, there's also a lot of great cover Bs out there from some amazing cover artists throughout that run. But yeah, I really think this is more that the the current James Tinian run is so popular that you know stores are really beefing up their offerings of that. And then in turn, trying to cut their inventory of Tom King books because that's it's not like what they were doing New 52 with Tom King. Yeah, exactly. No one's no one's no one's looking for it now so it's it's exactly like what happened with new 52 
and it's why we talked about this on the last call show when we had the first James Tinian book. We said this is essentially Batman number one, yeah. um, and that's the way it's being treated. Um, and I think that's where you're seeing this reflection, uh, whether it's like Midtown's 95% off sale that they had tons of Tom King Batman. I will say kudos to DC for not making a Batman number one. Yeah. Cause yes. a lot of times they do that and they, we've seen it where they reboot it and like, Oh my God, another reboot. But yeah. Yep. I, I totally, totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. I think, I think sticking with the plan and the program that they had was the, the smart way to go, especially being so close to issue 100, which obviously gives you a nice caveat there. But, um, you know, I, I, I've seen it on the Midtown 95% off sale when TFAW did that dollar sale, there was Tom King books all throughout it. I missed this with our innovation section, but Hall of Justice started a new website, comicsforabuck.com. It's amazing. Yes. Cute. A bunch of Power Ranger books on there, by the way. Oh, my God. So many dollar books. A lot of first appearances. A lot of, like, second prints that aren't worth anything right now, but uh, could be something down the road. Lot, just tons of great books. Um, but Tom King's Batman run was through. Hall of Hall Justice or Hall of Comics? I forget. Hall of Comics, I think. Yeah, yeah Hall of Comics. Um, but, you know, at – Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think you're going to see this Tom King run. Whenever conventions get back started again, throughout dollar boxes. But great time for my run collectors out there, um, for my people out there who maybe are missing issues. Um, just be patient because I think that at this point, if you were missing, say, 20 issues in this Tom King run, I'm not paying cover price. I'm buying these things cheap at this point. I would be, I would be as tight about it as possible because I think you can buy them cheap. Definitely agree. And that's our three up, three down for this week. Again, like we always say, let us know in the comments. What did you think of the up? What did you think of the down? What are your picks? What do you think's hot right now? What do you think's cold? Different, different time right now. I mean, we keep talking about it, right? But the way the comic books is going. But the, I think overall, the hobby is still thriving in its own way right yeah like we talked about the innovation of, people are still buying books people are still buying ebay people are still talking about books people are still talking about great stories and again if you haven't done so make sure you check out mainframecomiccon.com put the link up on the screen right here check that out that's going on at the end of the month those people put together a great show so far we're talking about comic core chuck load of comics a couple bunch of other people make sure you check the guests make sure you check the partners awesome site and it's all going to be available to watch right from your own computer we're going to they have artist alley they got kevin smith they got clark greg they got a whole bunch of other people on there so check out mainframecomiccon.com and then also bookmark that so you can be prepared end of the month to participate in that virtual comic-con right jack Oh, absolutely. And, you know, there's no reason why we have to cancel con season just because we're all stuck inside. So it's great to have an alternative to the convention to try to give you that convention experience from home in the safety of your own home. So I'm excited uh, for our participation in that. And those guys are doing a great job uh, putting this together. I'm really excited about that guest list. It's, it's getting growing every day. Yeah. And the proceeds are going to Red Cross and Heroes Initiative. So definitely a good cause for that. And with that being said, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next video.